Okay, now we're going to focus on HR development functions. HR development is defined as a process of enhancing the effectiveness of an organization. There are micro and macro organizational changes. Macro focuses on the organization as a whole. Micro focuses on the smaller groups, individuals, and teams within an organization. Now we have an updated learning and performance wheel, which provides what human resources development is and how it can work with other functions within HR. First is a strategy should always be the center of attention for HR efforts. Second, the wheel shows a traditional human resources management. Third are the rules for different departments. And fourth, provides more expanded information on human resources development. HR development functions continued. Strategic management and HRD is a strategy and goal for organization that must include a mission, goal, beliefs, and values. Several types of distinct process such as strategy formulations, strategy implementations, and control are some of the ways management involves when making decisions and actions that are intended to provide the best fit for a long-term performance of an organization. These same organizations use the internal and external employees and vendors that have the same missions, goals, beliefs, and values that characterize their organizations so that they are aligned within each other. There are other areas that help make up an organization such as management practices, organizational structures, human resource systems, and other work practices and systems. This is used to run the facility by technology or information systems that help facilitate the work process. When Bruce Kaufman's commitment model had been developed, he never thought that it would change over the years and evolve to what it is today. There are three different levels of HRD executives that should contribute information, idea, and recommendations during strategic formulation and to ensure that an organization's HDR strategy is consistent with its overall strategy. The second strategy role is for the HRD professional is to assign the task of making sure that they provide proper education learning tools and training programs. The third HRD professionals make sure that the training that is being provided meets the organization's rules and goals. The key factor in the success of this effort has been training. According to Bob Gonzalez, who said it best, training customer service representatives well was crucial to the center's success because they are the initial point of contact with the customer. These representatives usually go through weeks of training, lectures, role plays, and partnering with experienced employees just to get a feel for the real life and what is to come. Back to you, Lauren. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and continue with HR development functions. We're going to start with the supervisor's role. The supervisor's role is to work on implementing programs and processes. Programs are orientation, training, coaching, and career development. Then we're going to have organizational structure of the HRD function. HRD function is used to support an organization strategy. Here is an organizational chart on the right of a large HRD department. So at the very top of management, we're going to have Director Human Resources Development. Then we will have HRD Research and Evaluation Specialist to Program Developer. Then we're going to have Management Development Specialist, Skills Training Administrator, Organization Development Specialist, Career Development Counselor. 
Then we're going to take one more step down to on-the-job training coordinator, safety trainer, and sales trainer. As you can see for this large department, we started at the very top in management and worked our way down to the bottom. Okay, our next section is going to be roles and competencies of HRD professional. An HRD professional must perform many different functional roles. A functional role is specific to task and output for a particular job. Three areas of required foundational competencies are personal, interpersonal, and business and or management. These particular competencies are being used to develop areas of expertise within the workplace. The four key roles of HRD professionals are learning strategist, business partner, project manager, and professional specialist. If you look at the blue pyramid on the right, at the very top, you will see those four key roles for the HRD professional. Now we're going to look at the HRD executive and manager. HRD executive and managers used to be known as a training director, but as of today, they are known as chief learning officer. They're going to be responsible for all HRD activities. It is important these managers integrate HRD programs with goals and strategies of their organization. The most important task is to promote the value of HRD to know that organizational members have competencies to meet for future job demands. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and continue with the roles and competencies for the HRD professionals. Um, so. As you look here, we are going to have the roles and outputs for HRD professionals, starting with HR Strategic Advisor, HR Systems Designer and Developer, Organization Change Agent, Organization Design Consultant, Learning Program Specialist, Instructor Facilitator, Individual Developer, Performance Consultant, and the research, Researcher. Then we have a certification in education for HRD professionals. A certification program began in 2006 based on competencies identified in the Mapping the Future study. Additional certificates to earn are Professional in HR, a PHR, Senior Professional in HR, which is a SPHR, and Global Pro Professional in HR, GPHR. Okay, now we have challenges to organizations and HRD professionals. The six challenges currently facing in the field of HRD are competing in a global economy, eliminating the skills gap, increasing workforce diversity, meeting the need for lifelong individual learning, facilitating organizational learning, addressing ethical issues, and dilemmas in a proactive, effective manner. Now we have competing in a turbulent global economy. Organizations should focus on the global leadership issues and must learn cultural sensitivity to create better communications with businesses in other countries. A major challenge for organizations is to have their managers become global leaders. Then we also have addressing the skills gap. Many high school students do not graduate and with high school students not having an education, they will not meet certain job requirements. Certain jobs do require um, particular skills that are needed for that particular job. In the United States research shows that 25 to 40% of hourly employees lack basic skills. Challenges to organizations and HRD professionals continued. Increasing workforce diversity. Regardless of what race, ethnic, gender, or age, opportunities should be available along with training to all employees. Setting a standard in the beginning, showing that there is no type of discrimination against anybody is always a plus 
this has landed some of the organizations into the fortune magazine's top and best 100 companies to work for also increasing of women in the workforce should also continue to provide development opportunities that will be able to prepare women for advancement into senior ranks. This also does provide a safeguard against those women who feel they are being sexually harassed. Another area that should be taken a closer look at will be those younger generation and older generations that need to come together to be able to work and facilitate together to make sure that the organization continues to grow so that they both have job security. The need for lifelong learning. Continuing educational classes are needed to allow employees to learn more and assist in the corporation's growth. This allows for those employees who wish to make a career within the company be able to show their true worth. Continuing to learn and grow also does help with the changing of times, learning the new technology and being able to pass on their knowledge to those either entering into the corporation or those that have been there for a while that just need a refresher. Setting some examples for those that are coming in and are self-motivated employees can take learning at their own pace. Set up inter interactive video programs that allow them to be able to take the time to actually learn so that they're not rushing through the changes that are set to come. In the end, setting and providing lifelong learning opportunities for all their employees should be a priority. Facilitating organizational learning. If a corporation truly wants to continue to grow with their employees, they must learn to change and adapt as well, but keep all the same principles. Adapting to change is a must for any organization that wants to continue to grow and succeed within the company and the industry. One challenge that is hard for HRD professionals is facilitating a transition from traditional training programs to more enhanced or more technology-based training. Three things they will need to learn are principles and tactics, how to learn to relate to performances, and the relationships between learning and fundamental change. These are all necessary for an individual's development. Addressing ethical dilemmas. Setting expectations from the start with clients and employees keeps everyone on the same page and review the code of ethics set by the company so that there is an understanding from the beginning of what is to be expected regardless if you are an employee or a vendor. There are several code of ethics guidance for an individual to be self-managed within the workplace, learning and performance professionals, recognizing the rights of each individual, develop human potential, provide employer, client, and learners with the highest level quality education, training, and development, comply with all copyright laws and the laws and regulations governing the positions, keep informed and pertinent knowledge of competence in the workplace learning and performance field, maintain confidentiality and integrity in the practice of profession, support peers and avoid conduct which they're participating in their profession, conduct in a ethical and honest manner,
improve the public understanding of a workplace learning and performance, fairly and accurately represent workplace learning and performance credentials, qualifications, experiences, and abilities, and contribute to the continuing growth of the profession. Training and HRD process module. The four-step process system visualization used by new employees to help them become more effective in the organization. When following this system theory, it is designed to help address a wide range of issues and problems within an organization. This also helps individuals and groups become more effective and know how to achieve their goals within the company. A framework for the HRD process. Needs assessment phase. Figure out what the problem is and establish a priority, then define what needs to happen next. This should be used to help fill the gaps within an organization, from poor employee performances to a new challenge that might need to be changed in the way an organization operates. Design phase. Each area should have a lesson plan to learn with the proper materials. Selecting the specific objectives of the program. Developing an appropriate lesson plan for the program. Developing and acquiring the appropriate materials for the trainees to use. Determining who will deliver the program. Selecting the most appropriate method or methods to conduct a program and then schedule the program accordingly. When developing contact for the program, this could also mean choosing the most appropriate settings for the program, which might be on the job, in a classroom, online, or some combination. These techniques are to be facilitated as learning techniques to use and utilize lectures, discussions, role plays, and simulations. Implementation phase. Enforce the changes and methods. Selecting those managers that are equipped with enforcing the changes. Making sure that what has been presented that is best for the organization must be carried out accordingly. These managers should also be able to execute the program as planned with the ability to solve problems that might arise. Evaluation phase. Assess the changes. Find out what worked, what didn't, does more training need to be added to one area more than the other? By this time, a company should be able to see what is going to work for their organization. The decisions that were made to cut out areas that might be wasteful might be beneficial to bring back. Continue to use particular techniques or vendors in the future programs that will be available to the employees. Offer particular programs to certain individuals who you deem fit to maybe grow in different areas of the company. Budgeting and resource allocation can sometimes help, help when planning additional training courses. This concludes our presentation for chapter one.